Hi guys and welcome for another fun video. Today we're meeting with Kevin at e Muscle Cars and well, they build electric muscle cars. But what's the most interesting muscle car you would want to see converted to electric? The Cobra and not just a replica, it is a proper full-on licensed Cobra. So let's take it for a spin and see if we can burn some rubber. All right, welcome to another episode. Today we are with Kevin and his Cobra. Um, Kevin runs e Muscle Car and he's going to tell us everything about this particular Cobra and the business. All right, Kevin, where are we and how far are we from your uh, Today company? Today we're at uh, Electrify, um, Electrify Exo. This car is in the show-off category. Yeah. It's our e Cobra. Okay. So what do you do? Do you start with a a brand new uh, body and chassis, do you, what do you do? So we start off with a brand new licensed Shelby Cobra that we purchased from Superformance. All right. And we convert it to electric. So this car is ordered with no motor, no transmission. And then we install a Tesla large drive, Tesla performance large drive unit in the rear of the vehicle and then a battery pack in the front. Okay. Um, instead of 427 inch, or 427 inches uh, cubic inch, it has 427 volts. Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, so what are the, the various steps of converting uh, this chassis and body shell? How, how much do you need to modify the chassis, for instance? So, luckily this car has a pretty nice chassis underneath it. It's a, it's a nice tube frame chassis. So we actually have a jig that is designed that goes in the rear of the chassis, and it helps us pre-drill the chassis in the rear and we remove the differential and we remove the trunk frame and then our motor cradle actually plugs right into the rear of this chassis. Okay. Uh, it's designed to seamlessly bolt into the rear of the chassis. We add a stiffener, we add shock tower bracing in the rear and we add a stiffener to the uh, chassis right at the rear of the transmission tunnel. Okay, so do you sell complete cars or do you sell the system itself? So this will be a complete car for sale. Eventually we'll get to selling systems to existing Shelby owners but right now we're starting off selling brand new cars. Okay. So I've noticed the finish everywhere is just fantastic. Um, you go to, to very Thank you. high level, yeah. So we work with our gauge partner, Speed Hut, uh, to have an replica, exact replica of the original Cobra gauges. However, instead of RPM, we have amperage draw, um, we have battery temperature, we have the high voltage battery pack level, we have low, our low voltage battery pack level, uh, and so forth. Motor temperature, battery temperature, um, all on the gauges displayed right in front of you. Okay. So our, our goal was to have that cla keep that classic look instead of you know a flat screen panel and the dash like all the other modern electric cars. We really wanted to capture that that authentic feel. Okay, let's go through all the drivetrain, not just uh, the motor, the battery pack, and inverter, charger. What do you use, and why do you use those systems? Sure. So when we started e muscle cars, our plan was to use all uh, all new off the shelf components. However, with supply chain shortage, we decided to use Tesla engines. Tesla has the most power uh, bang for the buck. Um, so we use either very low, sub 30,000 mile Tesla motors, or we use re uh, remanufactured Tesla motors. Okay. So brand new bearings, brand new electronics. We replace the control board inside the inverter with an AEM control board. Okay. And we use AEM uh, control systems throughout the vehicle. Their charger, their control unit, their inverter board their power distribution unit, uh, and so forth, so we can have one complete robust package. Uh, AM's been great to work with, and, and the car is just very, very um, fine-tunable. You know, we can fine-tune every aspect of the, of the car uh, for the customer. So I understand you'll be offering different modes uh, for, for the final product. We're, tell us more about it. Sure, so built into the tune, we'll have a valet mode, a normal daily driving mode, a track mode, and then a, uh, let's call it donut mode. Uh, with, <laughs> That's you know, the one we will test then. Sure. So we, the torque will have a pretty smooth ramp up and in most of the driving modes. Valet mode cuts the power in about half, same smooth uh, torque curve. And then in donut mode, the torque curve starts off instantly. Exactly, okay. Now let's see what's under the, the hood, the, in the engine bay, if All you right. should say, yeah. Well, hold your breath. <laughs> well, uh -oh. there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the motor? Yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, you pretty much have a, like a, a luggage compartment. Definitely. So our lower two battery pack sizes in this car will have this dial uh, front trunk. Um, so our smallest battery pack is more of like a drag pack or autocross pack for motors for short distance motorsports um, or short cruising. Okay. Uh, the car is in its lightest weight state, so it's in its most 
its highest performance state as well. Okay. Um, we have four different battery packs for the car, ranging from about 75 miles to probably 275 miles, maybe 300 miles. Um, we're still completing testing on some of the larger battery packs. But right now, our lower three battery packs uh, have all been tested in, the, in this, this particular vehicle. This is our test vehicle okay. that we're showing off here today. Uh, let's see what's on the, in the trunk then. Sure. It's quite similar. So, under the trunk. Pretty. You still have empty, yeah. quite a usable trunk in the car. So it's almost as big as the original one. Correct. It's, yeah. uh, you lose about a third of the trunk okay. um, in the back of the car. And then under, right between the wheels is the motor and all the electronics. There's a gear tray behind the trunk that is accessible behind the carpet. Uh, it's where you can access all the electronics um, and the, the battery systems. Okay. Show us the charge pot also. Sure. So, ah, looks utilizing yeah. the gas port, we now have the J1772 universal charge port in the car. This car has level 2 charging, but also we do offer level 3. Uh, the CCS port is installed in the trunk. Okay. Not nearly as cool as having it in the gas cap, so uh, <laughs> we'll keep both in the car. Excellent. Um, tell us more about the wheels and braking system. Sure, so the cars can be ordered with a um, standard four piston Willwood or a six piston Willwood, much larger brake system. And you can either have 15s or 18 inch forged aluminum wheels. All right, so you can keep the traditional look of the Cobra, Absolutely. although a bit more modern. Yep, so they are all center lock wheels, so it's a traditional style wheel. It's, it kind of gives that Cobra that unique look. So what, who's your customer, your typical customer? Our typical customer is the guy that wants, you know, something that, that his friends and buddies don't have. <laughs> um, you know, it's the guy looking for, should I buy the new 911, should I get a classic car, uh, should I get a new Tesla Model Plaid, well, why don't we combine those two and have the best of both worlds. Yeah. So how many vehicles do you plan on, on building next year? So this year we're building one uh, in our first R&D year. Last year we built uh, one vehicle a quarter. Uh, this, this coming year we're hoping to build one, one a month. Wow. And we're also building Mustangs, Camaros and early Corvettes yeah. from the 50s and 60s. So for them we will have to visit you in Dallas, Absolutely. visit the whole business. So you have to go about 200 miles up the road in Dallas and come see us. All right. Uh, tell us more about the business, how it started, uh, where you work with. Definitely. So we started the business about a year and a half ago, a little less than two years ago. Uh, I'm a classic car owner and my business partner is a classic car owner. We've purchased cars uh, both independently and at some Barrett Jackson and Mecham auctions. And we've both had hit or miss luck with some of the older cars. They're, they're always maintenance heavy. They might look like, you know, fully restored car, but when you only drive a car a few times a year uh, in fair weather driving, they take quite a bit of maintenance to get them up to snuff yeah. to drive. You know, take your family out, take your date out, take your wife out uh, in the vehicle. So if you don't want to spend that, you know, week, weekend getting it ready to drive the following week, you just want it to be ready to go. Uh, you know, that wasn't the case with our classic cars. We we're having to, you know, rebuild the carburetor, drain the gas tank when it's in store, you know, storage for quite some time, change all the fluids, check all the old aging vacuum hoses, aging components of the car. They're now 55 years old, 60 yeah. years old in these cars. Um, so my, my business partner came to me with the idea and he said, can we make these cars as reliable as my brand new electric Porsche, electric Mercedes or electric Tesla? And I said, well, you know, it's not, it's not really simple, you know, we can't. He said, well, can we maybe put the old classic body onto the uh, you know, new electric so that's chassis? That's one way to do it. And it's yeah. one way to do it, but it's quite complicated. So our plan was, uh, let's take the guts of the electric cars and re-engineer them to go into the chassis of the, of the uh, existing classic cars. So we can utilize new electric motors, new electric power braking, new electric power steering, and larger brakes. We can uh, m manual, uh, I'm sorry, modern rack and pinion steering, mm -hmm. and modern coilover suspension with modern, uh, modern shocks. So our goal of our cars is for them to be near maintenance free and be as easy to drive as your average modern car. Um, that's, if you've ever driven one of the older car, uh, cars, 55, 60 years old, they've got you know, uh, inaccurate steering boxes and you're driving on the highway and you've got quite a bit of play in, in the steering. It takes a country mile to stop. Um, and the handling of the car is, is questionable. You know, it's not something you feel safe in taking taking your kids or family, or even tossing the keys to, you know, to your son or daughter to take a date out. You know, if they're in high school or college. Um, so we have really like to add safety. Our battery boxes are all lined in cr crush foam, the same stuff NASCAR uses in their doors. So in the case of a collision, the batteries are protected. 
We use redundant electrical safety, so each battery box has rollover switches and uh, inertia switches, so if you get in a wreck, um, it does shut off all the high voltage to the system. So then going back to how you set up the business, you had uh, obviously an extensive background in uh, V8 and ICE cars. How do you jump into the electric world and so, uh, do you, did you do any training? Did you train your staff? So definitely. Um, I have uh, education in electrical and mechanical engineering and I've been designing a, uh, electrical products for the last 18-19 years. Uh, so I kind of married my, my love of cars and my, my uh, background racing and building internal combustion cars as, as a hobby with my career as an, uh, as an engineer and merged those you know, to, to start e muscle cars. Um, I went to, uh, back to graduate school for some of the high voltage education and then my entire staff attended the legacy EV educational training to get more familiarized with uh, electri electrification of the vehicles. How big is your staff? Right now we have four engineers on staff and we have two t and two full-time technicians and a business development manager. Okay. So how big do you see the business grow in the next 24 months? In the next how long? 24 months. 24 months? Well, I think in the next probably 12 months it'll be a very slow build just because people are just getting used to the idea of electric classic vehicles. But after that adoption rate begins to pick up, I see the, the uh, the incline or the increase in business being extremely steep. Okay. Um, as soon as you start, see, like same with Tesla, you saw a couple on the road and you're questioning, you question the vehicle's reliability, you question it. But as more people drive electric cars, they're more familiar with the systems and how easy they are to drive. They're not as as nervous with the the concept of an electric car. And I really think most of our customers will be customers that daily drive an electric car. You know, once you've seen how convenient and easy it is to own. An electric vehicle, no more gas station trips, no more oil changes, uh, no more maintenance. Honestly, um, we don't have to change brake pads with regenerative braking. So I think that would be our customer. They, they they value their time, and they want to really enjoy the vehicle. They don't want to spend their time having to do the repetitive maintenance. All right. So for interested parties, how could they get a hold of you? So you can find us on our website www.e-musclecars.com. Uh, you can email us at info at e-musclecars.com as well. Uh, or come see us in Dallas, Texas. All right, that's uh, the next thing we'll be doing when the camera is ready. You will see us. Awesome. All right, thank you, Kevin. Thank you.